Hey everybody, Steve Ritter here. So I picked mowing day to do this, an error, but it sure is a nice day. It's nice and cool. I hope you can hear me okay. Got the mower going in the park, but this is Battery Park in Charleston. Got to do a little walking tour of some of my favorite places in Charleston, South Carolina. So um, this guy's uh, he's mowing his grass. So I hope you can hear me okay, but just a couple of sights and sounds. Well, you get lots of sounds, but a couple of sights and things around Charleston. So uh, this is Battery Park here. Um, now we used to bring, when I was stationed here back in the mid 90s, mid to late 90s, we used to come down here all the time. We bring my two oldest boys down here. And uh, these, these are live oaks right here. See the branches coming out, beautiful live oaks. And we used to like branch like this, we would uh, put the kids on it, let them uh, let them play. But if you look here at the at the oak there, you can kind of see see the angles that they have. That's unique to the to the live oak in the southeast of the U.S. And back in the the old wooden sailing ship days, uh, these these trees were prized like like um, this one in particular. See the see the angle there. Well, they would cut these trees down and these 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 angles here they would cut those out of those were the support beams underneath the ship that would help hold the decks up so it's a whole lot stronger to have a tree that grows that way than it is to 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 make it um to make it that way to put two pieces of wood together like that so uh ships built with using live oak oak in itself is is naturally strong but ships using live oak in its construction were, were especially strong so it was prized uh, and there's a lot of those around here and you know they look real old but surprisingly you know these these trees are probably maybe 50 years old something like that so a lot of them were blown down with Hugo Hurricane Hugo and they come back fairly quick but uh, there's a lot there's one over on John's Island called Angel Oak uh, you can look that up and see but that's that one's several like four five five hundred years old something like that so uh, anyway i uh, hope you enjoy the tour we're gonna hit some sites and i'll kind of talk as we go along it sounds like the mower's moved on now so hopefully not so many sounds that you can't hear so we'll be right back so this is a 13 inch mortar used during the civil war times um, these are the the size of the cannonballs that would come out of it um, so these mortars would lob uh, shells and explosive shells they were timed the, sh the fuses they put in the in the in the mortars they would light them and then fire them off and time it so that the mortar came down and exploded where they wanted it to so this is actually a union mortar that they used to fire on fort sumter in 1863 uh, but the the confederate ones they used were similar similar design used to fire on fort sumter and i'll show you that here in a in a second so Lots of old uh, Civil War cannons. That's, of course, that's an old cannon from a ship there, it looks like, but this is a big old boy right here. That'll cause you a world of hurt to hit with something like that. But uh, a lot of Civil War, they call this Battery Park. Um, and here we are out here, so it's a pretty park. It's on the um, south uh, southwest corner of the peninsula of Charleston. So um, lots of old homes here, and I'll show you some other, some other things here in a second, so. Yeah. Some dolphins in the harbor today. There's one. Let's see if you see it popping up. Group of them there. There they are. They're in the harbor all the time. Eat fish. View. This is looking uh, west up the up the Ashley River. You know, we used to call it the Trashley, but that's probably unfair. But uh, it used to be up this river were plantations around here, uh, up the river a ways right where it turned uh, where it turned fresh and they grew rice here now that is um, 
James Island, John's Island over there. James Island, actually. So. All right, so this is the battery here at Charleston. So a lot of old homes. This is Battery Park. So back in the uh, early morning hours in April of 1861, lots of mortars and cannons lined up here to fire on that. That is Fort Sumter, or what's left of it. Back then it was a three, a three story fort in the mouth of Charleston Harbor. And the Union, well, the, the federal forces refused to leave, even though they were told to. So the Confederates lined up mortars uh, on over there. That's um, Sullivan's Island. Fort Moultrie is right there, which is, is like point blank, basically. And then they had batteries over on James Island to fire on Fort Sumter. So they fired on it. And ironically enough, nobody was killed during the bombardment. I think there was one guy accidentally, there was a cannon blew up. They killed one guy uh, after the fact, but uh, they shelled it until they finally surrendered. There was no hope, so. But this is the battery. When I was a cadet, we used to, this was the romantic place to go at night walking along there, so as you can imagine why, so. so this is Castle Pinckney. It's an old, uh, the original Fort Garden Harbor back in, way back in the early 1700s. Um, they since moved, uh, moved away from that. They put the forts over in the, in the mouth of the harbor. So you had Fort Sumter and Fort Moultrie. Fort Moultrie is a famous uh, Revolutionary War battle back in uh, 1770, Six, I believe it was, summer 1776. British tried to sail into Charleston and the fort fought them off. So, famous, famous battle. And the commander of that fort was this guy, Moultrie. That's why they call it Fort Moultrie. So, this is a view of the harbor from the battery. Always liked it out here. Usually there's people out here fishing. Wednesday, about 11.30. Not too much going on, so. When Hurricane Hugo came, this, the ocean came right up over the seawall. So you have to worry about that when the time comes. But uh, beautiful, though. Beautiful homes. This is Bella's favorite home here. Pink. <laughs> or peach. It looks pink to me. But uh, pink is...
farther back, and that was for tax purposes, which is kind of kind of neat how that worked. But I was like that house, doing a lot of work on it. Here's another. Here's another nice one. I love the columns on this home right here, and you can see kind of the gardens back in the back there.
this is the second Yorktown. It was christened right after. It's an interesting one here. Interesting home. There, a little different than the other ones. A lot of money here back then. Interesting fact, uh, I was reading that uh, that the value of, of slaves in 1850 was worth more than the entire production factory uh, value in, uh, in the North. So, terrible time. Glad we're all past that. But, yeah, they got a nice chari carriage tours around Charleston, too. Best taking care of horses in, in the South right there. Should just follow this guy along. <laughs> we do that. That's a that's a, a life hack, by the way. When you're on walking around some place like that, and you see those tours going around, just kind of hang around the periphery, <laughs> get a free tour, get the free uh, thing till they catch you. So, real nice homes. So back in the day, when I was a cadet at the Citadel, this was a at the time, I think it was a Masonic Lodge. I, I think it's a yacht club now, but uh, on the end of the street here. This is East Bay Street. And they used to have parties out there. And, and a big, the big thing at the Citadel was a, as a senior was getting your ring. And we used to have ring parties out there a lot of times. And there was a story, uh, and, it, and it happened every year where you know guys were end up having a little too much fun and they high-fiving each other. Well, one guy's ring went right off that side into that water right there. And he had to go down into the water trying to feel for his ring with his bare feet in the water in the mud. And uh, and he was able to actually find it, which they told the story the next day in the chow hall. And uh, it was a triumphant cheer. So everybody, everybody can understand. So all kind of stories every year of people losing their rings and finding them. So and people, well, you don't hear about the ones of people losing them and not finding them, so I guess that's one-sided. So, nice little harbor tour boat there. It's like an old river boat. It's kind of cool. So, a little bit more, one more of the harbor. And this is the famous Charleston Rainbow Row right here. So, um, starts kind of about there where you can see all the different houses along here, all the different colors. And there's a, there's a, you can't just willy-nilly decide you want to paint your house a different color. You have to actually get approval. It sounds interesting. You get approval from the town council. So, and these, so again, like I said, it's kind of a, kind of a white elephant. You know, it'd be great to have a house here, but man, you'd have to put up with a whole lot. So this is Rainbow Road, walking down East Bay Street. You can probably follow along on Google Maps and see where I'm at here, too. Pretty nice. There's a musical, Porgy and Bess, that was written about Charleston down here. I've never seen it. Maybe some folks that no, but Rainbow Row, we'll see some more here. So. The Ravishing Mrs. Ritter pointed out that this is actually Rainbow Row right here. This is the this is the one you hear about and see about. All the different colors. Kind of starts up there a little bit. But, uh, some expensive real estate here. Rainbow Row. See why. So Charleston was a it was a shipping town, and the and the wharfs used to come right down to the to the water, and the, the ships used to be lined up um, along the, the obviously along the water. But this is cool. This cobblestone roads here. So the ships would come back from England carrying finished goods to the colonies. Of course, the finished goods, you know, it wouldn't fill the ship up or, you know, as much as they could afford or whatever, but it was never as much as the raw materials that were shipped from the from the, the colonies back to England. So the 
the ships would come over with ballast in their holds and they'd bring these river rocks there. And when they get off the, they pull the ship up and they take these river rocks off and they would use these to pave the, pave the roads. So these were cobblestone paved roads. And this is part of the old wall city that they discovered back in 2008. That's roughly where, where it was and they drove some, some cypress poles in front of it as palisades and all. So it's much more of a walled city of fort back then. But that, that, I always thought that was cool with the cobblestone streets coming in from the ships. And they would carry the raw materials, the live oak, cut live oak, pitch, uh, rice, things like that that they would bring back. So pretty cool. Here's some more Rainbow Row. Pretty cypress and oak line on the street. Construction. See the colors of the homes there really it's like a rainbow. That's what I call it that. And a lot of upkeep to keep these houses going. Some of these homes are pretty old. See the view down that street? That's Rainbow Road. Here's something, uh, here's something cool too. And if you look close, see these little, um, these little, I can get my finger up. Right place. See that's right there. Those those are actually bolts that go through the walls that help hold the walls together. Because they've, they've had several earthquakes over the years in Charleston. And that's a that's a technique, a building technique back then that to help hold the buildings together in case it was an earthquake. And there's some more up there. Painted over those. A lot of times they make the, the plates ornate. That, that's that's what that is to help hold them together. Of course, nowadays they they've got the earthquake-proof building and all, but uh, that's what they did back then. There's been fires and earthquakes over the years. Charleston keeps coming back. To look down Broad Street, very broad. That's why I named it that. Corbos Dungeon. Have time we'll travel. It's looking down East Bay Street. Is that St. Uh, that's St. Michael's? I believe. So this is, um, again, Charleston was a big slave uh, market area. A lot of the slaves from Africa and the East Indies came over through Charleston. They would bring them in and over to um, Sullivan's Island for quarantine. They keep them over there to make sure that all the diseases were, were run through and everything else. And then they bring them here for auction. And lots of stories. So this is, that's history. Wish it wasn't, but that's, there it is. I'll hold, try to hold it still so you can read it. So pause your screen if you want to read that. Uh, here's some more of the cobblestone roads. This is right next to the old post exchange building. And again, heading down East Bay Street. Some more views. Downtown, this is a little bit more my stomping grounds. Back in the day. We would Somebody to bounce it off. Nice. Street side markets here, but we would come down. This used to be the East Bay Trading Company. It was a place we used to go. I was usually go there as a, as a young, you know, 21 year old, hang out there on the weekends. Nice view down the streets. This is a little bit more where we kind of hung out as cadets. A couple of places down here. Played music. Chance to meet girls because when I went to the Citadel, it was all male. This is a venue range down this way. And there's the waterfront park down here. We'll see that here in a second. 
And that's changed a little bit, built up. Of course, that park wasn't there when I was a cadet. That's real nice. We'll see that in a second. But we would uh, come down here trying to meet girls because there just wasn't any females at the, at the Citadel at the time. It was all male college till 94, 95, something like that. So um, this Magnolia's, this is probably our favorite higher end restaurant here in Charleston. Love it. They have good stuff. They have uh, blue cheese, potato chips, and uh, Bananas Foster there is pretty good too. So still walking down East Bay towards the market now. So you can see the nice market. People getting out and about a little bit. I'm masked up. This U.S. Customs House down here. Uh, this is on the corner of Market and East Bay. And this is really where we, we hung out. So this is the market. City Market, Old City Market. We used to call it the Slave Market, but but they said that actually there was no there were no slaves that were sold there. Back row over by the Customs House, right back by the old Exchange, where I was telling you. But lots of lots of little people selling their wares and everything else all through the market, all the way down the street there. Restaurants down either side. An old church they turned into a restaurant. Restaurants, company bars. Okay. Pretty nice here. It gets pretty busy when the cruise ship comes in, and uh, well, of course, before pre-corona, it was pretty busy down here. But uh, usually, there's. Uh, it used to. This market used to really only be open on the weekends when I was here. It's pretty much open every day now. People having their things here because there's just such a huge tourist industry now in Charleston. You can imagine why all the, the people and all the things to see here but uh, the market will make that a time another day uh, we'll walk through there and see some other things so we'll go check out the waterfront park now so look down Bendu name of the street Bendu range this used to be a uh, nightclub place called the jukebox when I was a kid at here, and now they've turned it into a hotel. Looks like they're building something else over here. But this is the waterfront park. It's real nice. When it's a little warmer. You usually see kids. You usually get see kids jumping in the water there and playing. But this is a nice, uh, nice view out here. You got the Yorktown out there. So this is all new. To Joe Riley, he was the mayor for from like 76 to like, well, like 2000 something. He was mayor for a long, long time. A lot of stuff named Joe Riley around here, but that's the famous uh, pineapple water fountain that you see in a lot of the Charleston pictures. Real pretty at night, which I, I found that technique lighting things with, with harsh edges, like uh, in Abu Dhabi, they would light underneath palm trees. Like these palm trees here, the ones they have there have those, see the things sticking out the side there, the old branches that they cut all the way down the side and they put a light up underneath it, shining up the tree. It's a nice look. And that pineapple like that, lit like that, looks real nice. I like that technique, it's real nice. So there's Castle Pinckney, the old fort I was telling you about. And then off in the distance right there is Fort Moultrie. I'm sorry, Fort uh, Sumter. It's a nice little tour to go out and check it out. Got beat down pretty good. Um, these are these are little brass reliefs here that uh, kind of show what it looked like back in the day, 1700s, what the town looked like. This is the peninsula, Bay Street. This was where we started out, right here on the corner, back in the Back again, uh, the ravishing Mrs. Ritter, the producer, wanted me to remind everybody or to tell everybody. So there's St. Philip's. It's probably the most famous church there, old church. But they call Charleston the Holy City. 
because if you kind of look at it from the side and then from the distance, you can see a lot of church steeples rising up. And the, the rule, the law is, is that you can't, uh, I've never actually seen the law, but I've heard that uh, this is what it looked like back in the 1600s when it was first uh, kind of founded. Settled in 1670, so come a long way. But um, it, uh, you, you can't have any building taller than the tallest church steeple. So a lot of church steeples rising up. They call it the Holy City. We got the Yorktown uh, over here. That's Patriots Point. They've got an old uh, World War II destroyer out there, and a Russian submarine, and an American submarine. It's pretty nice. Nice look thing out here. I was out here one time with the kids, and there was a little family of raccoons in the marsh grass over there. Little baby raccoons. I don't know what they eat. Little crabs or hermit crabs or something. I guess raccoons eat about anything. So. It's kind of the look back down the, the way along the waterfront park back towards the way we came to the battery so i hope you you enjoyed this little tour walking tour and uh if you did let me know down in the uh, comments down below and if you'd like i can uh do a couple more maybe go by the citadel or do some other walks uh, kind of get into some of the houses because there's just so much to see in charleston and a day like today i love getting out walking around it so get some fresh air and seeing the seeing a beautiful city here there's the nice uh, bridge ravenel bridge now when i was here there were, used to be two bridges there one was the grace memorial bridge which was built in like the 20s two lane bridge that was pretty scary to drive over Ravishing Mrs. Ritter never liked to go over that one. Uh, and they had a, another more modern bridge, and they tore both of those down and replaced it with the big Ravenel Bridge, which is a beautiful bridge. Looking back, there's the back of the Customs House. Again, there's that hotel I was telling you about. So it looks like they're building something else here, too. A lot of construction. So, hope you enjoyed the tour. And uh, let me know if you'd like to see more. I'll do more. And uh, until then, Steve Ritter signing off.